Let's take a look at this example from section 4.3. This is an example that involves the first derivative test. And we're looking at this function over this interval. Now the first part of this problem asks us to locate the critical points of f. And this is a necessary step in using the first derivative test. So here we take the derivative um, using the chain rule and the product rule. Simplify that expression to help us identify the critical points, well, which in this case are going to be plus or minus the square root of 2. And notice that both of those critical points are in the given interval. Uh, that's important because we're only going to be interested in critical points that are in the interval. Um, part B asks us to use the first derivative test to locate local maximum and minimum values. That's what the test is used for, is to help us determine where we have local maxima, local minima, and that has to do with what's happening to the sign of the first derivative. So we take our critical points that we found over here, we look at our interval, and we think about how does the interval break up if we look at our two critical points, you know, as uh, being points within that interval. And that's going to break up the interval into three pieces, from negative 2 to negative square root of 2, from negative square root of 2 to square root of 2, and from square root of 2 to 2. And that's what I have listed here for those three intervals. Within each of those intervals, we want to see what is happening with the sign of the first derivative. Um, the only place where the sign of the first derivative could change is at a critical point. Uh, doesn't mean it necessarily will change sign there, uh, but those are the only places where we could see sign changes. So that's why it's important to divide up the interval uh, at those critical points. So what we want to do within each of those three intervals is substitute in a point to the first derivative and see what the sign is. So I encourage you to take points that are easy to work with. There's no specific values that you must use, but for example, in that middle interval, it makes perfect sense to use zero because zero is often very easy to work with. And we're substituting into the first derivative. And when we plug in zero, we find that we get a positive sign. Within the other intervals, we don't have the option of taking an integer, but you might do negative one and a half and positive one and a half. And you want to substitute in. What's really important there is the sign. It doesn't matter the magnitude for using the first derivative test, although you might be interested in the magnitude if you were using this to help you graph. So we see the sign goes from negative to positive to negative. That means that for when it's switching from negative to positive, the first derivative test says that indicates you have a local minimum there. When it changes from positive to negative, that's an indication of a local maximum there. And so our local minimum occurs at negative square root of 2. The y-coordinate, which we get by plugging into the original function, is negative 2. And the local max occurs at the square root of 2. And that y-coordinate is positive 2. Now there's a part C to this problem that asks us to now identify absolute max and min. And we've done a lot of the work to get there. Because to find absolute max and min, we need to find the critical points. We've done that. We need to evaluate the function, the original function, at the critical points and at the endpoints. Well, we've already evaluated the original function at the critical points. So what's left to do is to evaluate it at the endpoints, which I've done right here. And we see that. The, the original function evaluated at negative 2 and at positive 2, in both cases, gives us 0. So by comparing these 
y coordinates. We've got negative 2, we've got positive 2, we've got 0. The absolute minimum value is negative 2. That occurs at negative square root of 2. The absolute maximum value for this function on this interval is 2, and that occurs at the square root of 2. So that completes this problem. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.